I created the same five web pages in React and in HTMX using Kotlin to show the extent of what HTMX can do and to show that they actually aren't that different. With a small shift in mindset, you can actually do a lot of powerful things with HTMX. These are the five pages I've built. On the left is server-side rendered and on the right is client-side rendered. The first one changes a separate list when you change an input. And then the second one is an animation. This one is a polling you're waiting for a loading thing and you're getting updates from the server. And the last one is a WebSocket chat. So they both just talk to themselves. But if I write, I get a response from the server with the SpongeBob font randomly applied to my text. And the first one is the tabs. So just to show the basic example of how you can do tabs. I had people in the other video complaining that the URL wasn't updating. That's the point. It's not refetching the whole URL. It's just updating this component, but it is changing even when you click on the tabs without updating the URL. So I'll just go through and I'll show the example in React and then I'll show it in Kotlin with HTMX uh, just to kind of see the differences. Some of these require small mindset shift, uh, but most of them are pretty easy and they're almost a one-to-one -one copy. Uh, so let's get started. The first one is the tab menu. Like this, just being able to swap like that. And that's pretty easy with React. You usually have uh, navigation that you can import, but I just wrote my own one quickly. I have a list of tabs that contain the name. And then here I have a state that stores the current tab, which is just as a string. And then when I click one of the buttons, it'll update it to be whatever its name is. And then down here, I just have the equivalent of a switch case statement where depending on which one is selected, it'll show one of the pages. Now over to the Kotlin side, it's not too dissimilar. So this is just the empty page I render. I store a URL instead of just the name, but I could just store the name and append it here. And then I have my list of tabs. And instead of storing it in state, what I do is whenever one of the buttons is clicked, it does a get request and it updates the target of content. This div has the ID of content. So whenever one of the buttons is clicked, it'll re-render this whole div with whatever the response of the server is. And that's it, that's how you do basic navigation. Next one, so this one is I have one input and depending on what this input does, it'll update this other list. I can toggle all these on and off, same thing in React. I have a list of people and then I just have the state for the name enabled, the email enabled and where the last online is enabled. Each of the inputs will update the current state for that input. In the list, I just add conditional rendering. So if the state for name enabled is true, I'll show the person's name. If not, I won't render anything. Same for email, same for last online. Pretty simple. In Kotlin, again, not too dissimilar. I have a list of people again the same data. In this case, instead of updating state, the inputs just submit a form that inform the server of what the current state that the client wants. And then based on that, the server will just re-render the whole page, uh, updating it as necessary. Down here, I have the people map. And again, I have the conditional rendering. And that's it. The whole list is updated whenever any of the inputs change. Next is an animation. So this one is one of the first questions I hear when I try to introduce people to HTMX is how do you do animations? And the thing is that CSS animations just work exactly the same as they do normally. So the React example will be uh, obvious. Once again, we have state, which just stores the current shape. And then based on the state, I either render the circle or the rectangle. And these just have CSS transitions attached. And then whenever you click the button, it just updates the state. Super simple. But then the same thing here, it's also very simple. This component takes a shape as a string and same thing if it's a circle, it'll render the circle. If it's a rectangle, it'll render the rectangle. And these just have transitions attached. The only difference is that I have to make an ID so that HTMX knows which element is changing. From one render to the next, you can, as long as they have the same ID, the applied CSS animations will apply. And then when the button is clicked, you just make a get request for the other shape. So it'll receive the other shape, fill it in, but since it has the same ID, it will apply whatever transitions are necessary. Uh, and once again, I'm just re-rendering the whole content page. And there you go, next. This one is asynchronous load. Uh, so this is just polling the server when you're uploading something that will take a while. Here's what it looks like in React. So in React, once again, you keep state for the percentage. And then this would usually be a network request, but I'm just updating the percentage by 5% every 300 milliseconds. Using the styles on the component, I just update the width. 
HTMX implementation is very similar. Again, I just have a get request and this trigger means that it will apply every 300 milliseconds, just like the other one. And it will actually just swap itself. And since this is on itself, every 300 milliseconds, it will grab the new one from the server and the server will return it with the updated width. And last but not least, we have a chat that leverages WebSockets. So just like I showed before, this will just send your message and then send a response in the SpongeBob meme format. There you go. And how this works in React is I didn't actually do it with WebSockets, so that's more complexity that would be here. But same thing, you just keep a state for the messages and I keep a state for the current value of the input. And then for each of the messages, I map them out. And if they're sent by me, then I make them blue. If they're sent by the server, then I make them neutral. And then in the input, whenever you press enter, it just updates for messages with both directly. So it doesn't actually talk to the server, but you can easily see how you would do that. And then the Kotlin side, I wrap the whole div in a WebSocket. So this will create a WebSocket at this endpoint. And then any form submitted within this will submit the contents of the form as a JSON to the WebSocket. And then this div has an ID messages, which for WebSocket uses to find and replace with the new set of messages. And up here, it's just for WebSocket. It'll take whatever message you receive, append it to the list of messages that is currently stored with that WebSocket. It'll re-render the list of messages. And I'm also re-rendering the input just to make it empty. This ID will be used to find the input and replace it. And this ID will be used to find the messages and replace it, which again, isn't too different to React with state. When you're using HTMX, a lot of the time, the only difference is taking state and moving it to URLs. So if you can send whatever would be your state to the server, then you can easily do it in HTMX. Uh, and hopefully this shows you some of the capabilities and some of the things that you can still do using HTMX uh, when you're coming from React. Thanks for watching.